What's up, everybody? My name is Erin, and welcome to the Mad Maker Studio, and welcome back to Monsters of Little Haven. We have gotten through the first two chapters, a uh, bit of a slow buildup, not too much gameplay as far as uh, choosing the different dialogue choices and options. The longer I'm staring at this wavy mist, it just feels like it's a slow zoom into the door at the end of the hall. Uh, so that's a neat optical illusion. <laughs> Bit of a slow build up. I'm not sure what's going to happen from here on out, but it's very, very focused on the story at hand, like as far as like the universe our characters are in. Enough of my rambling. Let's hop into the Bram chapter. Kenneth peeked into his parents' open room. There was no one inside. He heard that someone was cleaning the first floor after the beaten predator's visit. Kenneth decided to go to the attic to finally deal with the monster issue. As soon as Kenneth opened the door, thick darkness embraced him. He couldn't see anything in front of him, so he left the door opened. He began to go up the stairs, hearing a treacherous creak under each step. Get a flashlight or a candle. Come on, you should have plenty of those around this house. As he was getting higher, the door slammed shut under its weight, taking the last beam of light. That's weird. I don't know how attic doors work. Kenneth froze in the middle. He stumbled a few times upon all the forgotten things of the Murphy family while trying to find some kind of switch. He felt a cord hanging from the ceiling and pulled it without thinking. And he was right. It was the switch of a light bulb. Not very bright, though. Yeah, as long as it gets the job done. Esme had told him about other people's monster drawings in the attic, but he didn't pay much attention to it until today. After looking through some stuff, Kenneth noticed an old military box in the corner. After moving a heavy lid, Kenneth found a pile of things photographs, military uniform, some papers. The first thing he took was a photo of his father in a uniform. Hmm, he seems happier here than in real life. At the back of the frame, Kenneth noticed some inscriptions behind the broken piece of plywood holding the photo. I was like, we gotta click and drag. It's like, you remember these picture frames? Well, I guess they still have them. I'm. I also had to use a butter knife, to, like get them open and close them again. He took out the photo and saw a message to his father. To my dear childhood friend, Bram Murphy, from a desk mate and a comrade in arms, Philip Hall. Together till the end. Under this photo, he saw another one in the drawer, a class photo. I'm not, I'm not liking that, that, uh, that fellow there in the middle. There was a silhouette drawn on it, very similar to the way Esme drew the monster. How do you know how she drew the monster? You didn't open her diary. Did you? And I wasn't paying attention. That's also possible. Uh -uh. Oh, Esme wasn't lying. I don't think she did it. Don't think she did what? Make it up? In the photo, his father stood next to his comrade from the last photo. Kenneth recognized him by his hair. The monster was scratched with a black pin on top of some teacher. Uh, not a fan of the hollow white eyes. The last thing Kenneth noticed was a dusty notebook. Hmm, it's my father's notebook. As Kenneth was flipping through the notebook, he saw nothing except a dialogue in the margins. You need to tell someone about this. I can't, I'll get kicked out. 
If you don't do it, I will. Don't, please, I'll figure something out. Bram's school years, the 1930s. Bram, you don't want to upset your mother, do you? Your mom is a wonderful woman who works several jobs for you. What if she finds out you have trouble studying? Don't worry, it doesn't hurt anymore, does it? Oh, great. <laughs> Oh, three dots. It looked like it was like part of the necklace or something, a collar. Okay, so that's the teacher. The door slammed shut behind Kenneth. He turned around and saw his father. Is it going to turn out to be something like the the real monsters are humans, are people? Put everything back and close the drawer. Hey, you woke me up. It's your fault. I can't go back to sleep. I got to process all this stuff you just put me through. Frightened, Kenneth followed the instructions, despite things slipping out of his hands. Oh, I'm sorry. Dad was standing there keeping Kenneth out of the way. What were you doing here? I was looking for a monster. Bram pulled an old wooden chair out of the darkness and sat down in front of Kenneth. <laughs> you don't believe this nonsense, do you? What about you? We're all just trying to be thorough here, okay? What are you talking about? Well, you drew the same monster as Esme. Bram was a little confused, but tried not to show it. How do you know? Did you go through my stuff? Yes, isn't that why you're upset with me right now? Esme told me there was a monster in the attic, just like the one in her diary. What, this diary? He showed Kenneth Esme's diary. What is happening? What is this dad? Well, where did you get it? It's not yours. Well, didn't you think that the drawings in the attic could be hers? I did. That's why I came to make sure. And it's not her monster. No, but whose then? It's yours. Is it going to be something like we all have our own inner demons that we struggle with? Bram looked away. What, what, what do you mean? Esme wasn't lying. Bram froze. Bram showed no emotion, but he moved, letting Kenneth know that he could leave if he wanted. Well, what are you going to do now? Well, I'll apologize to Esme that I didn't trust her. Bram gave a surprised grimace of incomprehension. And you should do the same. Well, I have no idea what you're talking about. Where are you going? To my room. Esme's been talking about the monster all day. Kenneth was angry because everything that happened to him seemed unfair. She felt sorry for you. For what? You've been so sullen and angry. Bram peered up. No one believed her, and you knew, but kept quiet. You drew the same thing. I'm glad he's calling his dad out like this. Bram handed Kenneth Esme's diary. We'd leave the diary with him or take the diary again i'm not i don't know what sort of ramifications these choices have what are the consequences 
I mean, I want to take the diary. I haven't read it yet. Kenneth snatched the diary from his father's hands. I didn't think I was going to snatch it away. I was just going to take it. Esme entrusted this diary to me. You won't get it. Kenneth left the attic angrily and headed to Esme to tell her everything. He approached Esme's bed and saw her asleep. Kenneth sat on the floor, leaning on her bed. Kenneth fell asleep. He awoke up to a light padding on the shoulder. Wake up, big guy. Kenneth saw his father ready to go somewhere. Oh, what now? Forgive me. Kenneth looked around the room but did not find Esme. What? Uh, for, for what? And where is Esme? Now listen to me. Listen carefully. You're making me very nervous and I do not like it. Esme's gone. He's not coming. You have to accept that. Is this all in his mind? My whole life was making me do terrible things. I couldn't stop. What? What's happening? Bram reached into his pockets. He took Kenneth's hand and put a military medal for valor in it. I don't deserve this medal. Now I'm giving it to you. That doesn't explain where the sister is. Where's Esme? Bram reached into his pocket once again, took out the house keys, and handed them to Kenneth. What? Now you're the head of the family now. Don't let anyone near you, your house or your mother. Oh, great. So now you're walking out on us. Don't you just want to you know, go to sleep and sober up first before you make this kind of decision? No one who looks anything like me. Are you the monster? What is happening? I'm more confused than I was. This is it. I'm, I'm the most confused I've ever been in my life right now. Bram pointed to his gloomy, bristly face, although it was unlikely he was referring to appearance. I've already talked to your mom. Take care of her. Well, great. Way to put this all on your on your literal child. A howl of police sirens was coming. Why? Dad, what did you do? I've got to go. Stay in the house until I'm gone. What did you do? Mother appeared in the doorway. Her eyes were empty. And clearly she knows what's up, but how long has she known? She and his father, emotionally devastated, looked at each other, but his father did not deviate from his plan and walked out of the house. Kenneth and his mother were looking out the window. Where's Esme? Bram Murphy! Hands up! Bram put his hands behind his head, but he didn't stop. Take me away, then go to them. The police car with Bram was driving away until it completely disappeared. The uniformed men approached the Murphy house. They knocked on the front door. Mom tried to open the door, but Kenneth held her hand. There could be monsters. Kenneth showed his mom a set of keys. I'll open it. What? What do you mean the end? 
Are there multiple endings or is this it? Like, what? Where is Esme? Oh, we got multiple endings. That makes more sense. One of eight. Like, what happened? Did, did he kill Esme? Like, what? I'm waiting for the title screen to pop back up because I have to dive back in. I'm so confused. Chapters. Okay, here we go. So there is something else. Okay, let's let's go to Murphy's because we did something that led to this Bram ending. Well, let's go ahead. Let's let's go back here and let's see where we could answer differently. See if that makes a difference. Chapter Murphy's. Kenneth fell asleep from exhaustion while sitting on the floor, but a few minutes later was awoken by Esme. Oh, it's not true. Kenneth was tired of Esme's antics and was getting angry with her. Oh, what's not true? Well, it's not true that no one saw him. I saw drawings of him in the attic. What drawings? Well, the same as in my diary. Well, what could that mean? Esme defiantly folded her arms and frowned. And now wait, how did you get into the attic? It's never been opened. Well, I was careful. Where did you get the key? Esme handed him Dad's set of keys. What have you done? Where did you get them? Dad will be furious. Well, I got them from his closet while you were sleeping. They heard a noise coming from the shed at the pier. Esme didn't waste time and expressed the most expected thing. Oh, it's a monster. We were there and found nobody. Oh, I saw it out the window. It's there again. I wonder if she was seeing the fox, maybe? Monster, but no, she felt sorry for the fox. Okay. Behind the door, they heard their father's rapid footsteps. He ran into the parents' bedroom, which was right next to their room. Kenneth was peeping through the half-open door. Dad took out a hunting rifle and ran down the stairs, slamming the front door behind him. It seemed he was drunk. Okay, so we fast forwarded to the Murphy's chapter. This was the, well, the first decision that we could make. And we we did the, I think the fox is still alive already. So let's, let's try to go this route and be a little mean and said, you could have learned, you could have learned a lot from him. Well, you had a lot to learn from him. Now don't get smart with me. Don't yell at him. In a moment of total insanity, the fox abruptly jumped up, made a circle around the first floor, then fled up the stairs, leaving behind little red marks. I was not expecting that. Father took the rifle and ran upstairs. Oh no. Kenneth was alone with his mother. Uh, I would, uh, mom, you want to follow dad up the stairs? I, uh, there's a lot wrong happening right now. And, um, uh, uh, take the gun away is what I'm trying to say. Well, Esme told me there was a monster in the shed. I almost believed her. We each have our own little monsters and sometimes big ones. Okay, yeah, that's what I was thinking. If, like, the monsters weren't actual monsters, but things that, you know, the... 
those emotions that live inside of us are like our inner demons. Oh, you too? Me too. Well, it's probably not a fox, or you'd be scared of it. Mother smiled. No, I'm not afraid of foxes. Why aren't you in bed yet? You've been on your feet since morning. Oh, I'm not tired. He heard father's voice from the second floor. Damn beast. Seems it jumped out the window of the nursery. Father came down the stairs and left the house to search for the wounded fox. Kenneth went up the stairs and saw four eyes shining in the darkness of the nursery. He hurried into the room to Esme. She was sitting in the corner <gasps> holding the wounded fox. Kenneth closed the door tightly and turned on the nightlight. What are you doing? It could bite you. Kenneth reached out to snatch the fox from Esme's hands, but she dodged away, clutching it to her. Well, she's hurt, and she hid in the corner under the bed. I got her out, and I'm making her better. Oh, honey, I don't think you're qualified to do that, but let's see where this goes. Well, how are you doing that? By whispering nice things to her to take the pain away. Kenneth turned his attention to the neck of the red monster. Baloo's collar was hanging on it. What have you done? Well, I thought you'd like it. Oh, give it back. Kenneth rushed to Esme, but the fox escaped her arms and ran down. Kenneth, in despair, called out to father. Dad, it's here. Catch it. No. Kenneth ran up the stairs and saw that the fox had stopped right in front of his father at the entrance and was making a noise like a growl or a squeal. It has Baloo's collar. Catch it. His father grabbed the fox by the collar and took it off, then grabbed the fox by the scruff of the neck and threw it out, closing the door. Well, I'm not even going to ask how the collar got on its damn neck. That was, that was less traumatic, I feel like. Father put the bloody collar in Kenneth's hand. Could have washed it off first, maybe. He had a fox bite on his forearm. You're bleeding. Let me treat it. Father left the rifle in the hallway and went to the sink. Well, I won't die. Just need to wash it out. His mother went to Kenneth and whispered in his ear, asking him to go to his room. You need sleep. Kenneth went to his room. After entering the room, Kenneth saw Esme sitting on the floor and staring aimlessly out the window. Huh, can't sleep? Kenneth sat down next to her. Nope. Why aren't you sleeping? Thought uh, there would be a little more, um, gushing. Yeah, I can't either. About what just happened? I'm sorry about the collar. Okay. I didn't mean to make you angry. No, never mind. Kenneth showed Esme the collar in his hand. Oh, I feel sad. For Baloo? For Baloo, too. And her hair moving, it just seems like they're underwater, unless that's just a side effect of the smoke. Who are you talking about? Poor Dad. Why pity him? I don't know. He's always so grumpy and angry. 
Esme was about to cry. I wouldn't want to be angry and sad. Poor mom. And poor you. Poor everyone. Esme burst into tears. Kenneth rushed to hug her. Oh, it's okay. Don't cry. But, but why is he so angry? How come? And okay, now, so I could, I could just come go completely opposite. Be like, it's all his fault. Maybe something made him that way. I am curious because our conversation changed. Maybe what happened in the attic. I'm not. 100% sure, but tell you what, I'm going to end this episode here and I'm going to think about this. And when we pick it up next time, I will have made my decision. Thank you so much for joining me. Please leave a like, comment and subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, I hope to see you next time. Bye.